The Air Force, which guzzles more energy than any other unit of the federal government, is using some of the same biofuel technology you saw earlier and has been showing it off at air shows with its world-famous Thunderbirds. But you may be surprised to know that the Air Force's biggest energy savings are occurring on the ground at its bases. As for the Army, it's focusing largely on power technologies that will make the troops on the ground faster and safer on their feet and in their vehicles. More from Lee Patrick Sullivan as he shows us how these two branches are taking charge of their energy future. There's nothing like a quick trip to Vegas in the middle of the week. President Obama isn't in Vegas to catch a show or to place a bet. He's there for the sun, a lot of sun, powering the 72,000 solar panels at Nellis Air Force Base outside of Vegas. It's the largest solar array in the Western Hemisphere, providing 25% of the base's electricity and saving the Air Force a million dollars a year in energy costs. And the solar array at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs produces enough electricity to power 1,200 homes a year. It's all part of an effort by the Air Force to get at least 20% of their energy needs from renewable sources by the year 2020. And it's not just the Air Force flying high with energy savings. At the Army Research Lab in Maryland, there's an entire department dedicated to improving batteries. And what we're trying to do here is to develop components to make the batteries lighter and last longer. And much needed for today's soldier, who carries into battle walkie-talkies, GPS devices, and night vision goggles. The more batteries they carry, the less of something else like ammunition they can carry. How important is it to lighten the load of a soldier? So this is where you keep all the goodies? The uh, Army invited us down to Fort Belvoir, Virginia to get a taste of what an average soldier has to carry into battle. <laughs> That's, that feels a lot heavier than 22 pounds. Actually, it's not. I'm just weak. <laughs> <laughs> one by one, I was suited up. Every piece of equipment adding more weight, including the 22-pound bulletproof vest, the 10 pounds of ammo, the 4-pound helmet, and the 10-pound weapon. In total, it's nearly 100 pounds of weight. In comparison, a World War II GI went into battle with about 30 pounds of gear. And just try running in this stuff. Oh, I have been in this gear all of seven minutes and probably ran the equivalent of 30, 30 yards, maybe. And I'm exhausted. Every joint and bone in my body hurts. A lot of that has to do with me being out of shape, but there's a lot of weight on here, isn't there? No, sir, there's not. Easy for him to say, trust me, it's heavy. So when you go out into the field, how important is it to get five pounds off here, two pounds off there with something that can do the same job? Anything that we can find that'll lighten the load, that'll maintain our capabilities, we look at and have it tested and then if it passes through the test then we bring it in. And the Army is also developing ways to charge those batteries without using a diesel generator, like this portable solar panel. So th something like this, you would have a soldier would have this and instead of carrying 10 lithium ion batteries. They just need one. Just need one. I absolutely. That's pretty cool, don't you think? I think so, yeah. 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 And pretty lightweight removing nearly 10 pounds of batteries. Back at Fort Belvoir, Army Major Mark Owens showed me several ways a soldier can charge a device in the field instead of carrying extra batteries. Lightweight methanol generators replace noisy, bulky, and flammable diesel ones. And check out this solar blanket. So easy to set up, I did it with no training in 20 seconds. Do soldiers in Afghanistan have this right now? Absolutely. Uh, exactly this. It's the reps kit, or which is the rucksack enhanced portable power system. Uh, and there's hundreds of them out there in the field, and you see people putting them on tents, more or less making a small solar uh, farm. But the Army's biggest energy savings could come from this place. It's TARDEC, the Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center outside Detroit. It's here where the Army's cutting edge vehicles are developed including some real top secret stuff behind this curtain. Now we asked them to give us a peek on what's on the other side of the curtain and this is all we're allowed to show you, but 
trust me, it's really cool. What they did allow us to show you was a prototype extended range electric vehicle. It can run totally electric and has a backup diesel generator for longer trips. This looks like one bad dune buggy, but it's a little bit more than that, isn't it? It's much more than a dune buggy. Mm -hmm. We call it the clandestine extended range vehicle, or CERV, C-E-R-V for short, that will allow our military to get to places where we might typically not be able to go. The same technology is also found in the Fisker extended range EV. The CERV can travel 11 miles on its lithium ion batteries, which can be an advantage in battle. So if you have to go in and you're on a mission to go out and bring some, let's just bring some injured troops back, and you don't want to hear the enemy to hear you, then if you run silently off batteries, that's perfect. But that battery also enables a vehicle to get 33% better fuel economy, and that's what will save lives. 1% increase in fuel efficiency for the military means 6,444 less soldiers involved in convoy operations. The folks at Tardec are looking at electrifying the Army's entire non-tactical fleet. Those are the vehicles that don't go into battle, like the ones on U.S. bases. Imagine what that would look like. There are 83,000 vehicles on U.S. Army bases. The Department of Defense has nearly 200,000 vehicles. If a unit of 10 of those vehicles were linked together, they could hold a 400 kilowatt charge, or more than enough electricity to power 100 homes. Those batteries could be very useful after a natural disaster, like a hurricane. So imagine a truck, because of the hybrid electric platform that you have, giving you 300 to 400 kilowatts of power. All of a sudden you can light up an airport. Or a hospital. And it's a future like that which brought the president to Vegas. Perhaps what happens in Vegas shouldn't always stay in Vegas. Lee Patrick Sullivan, Energy Now. The energy sector is also looking to harness the skills of military personnel leaving the service. Facing a potential worker shortage in the next five years, a consortium of energy companies this month launched what's called the Troops to Energy Jobs Initiative. It's designed to help speed veterans transition into civilian jobs in all energy sectors through recruiting, training and education.